believe in starting on time and ending early if we can, so uh, <laughs> let it go with that. I'm Betty Riley. I'm uh, the Executive Director of South Central Oregon Economic Development District, which is SCOED to most of the community. I'm based in Klamath Falls as far as my office, but Ginger, who is, uh, works with, with me, is uh, here in Lake County, and so we, those are the two counties that we work for, Klamath and Lake, and we work under the umbrella of the U.S. Department of Commerce. The Economic Development Administration provides part of our funding so that every five years, what we're charged with doing is looking at our region and coming up with a comprehensive economic development strategy. Now, economic development means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. What we're looking at primarily are what are the things that we need to have in place to help our economy. It's not necessarily something that Ginger and I are going to be taking care of, but the communities itself may need to be working on things the jurisdictions, the counties, or the towns and cities may be needing to work on projects. And or it may be just helping support small businesses in a way. So like I said, everyone kind of has their own perception about economic development. And one of the things that I would like you to do is introduce yourself, just what, who or what you're associated with, if anything, and kind of Maybe your quick thoughts on what economic development means to you. So, you want to start? Nice to have you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lisa Ackerman. I'm self employed. And um, economic development is a very broad spectrum. It, it, it includes not only businesses, but uh, workforce and um, livable situations. My name is Garrett Roseberry. Um, self employed. Um, predominantly, I look for economic security through regulatory issues on the state and federal levels. Okay. Sandra Watts, I'm an unemployed attorney, and um, I think of economic development since I just moved back to my hometown, where I'm a fifth generation person from this area, and I'm astounded at the decline of this place. So I'm looking at more than just attracting big businesses, but I think we have to look at the resources that we have within us. It is what it is, and we have to deal with that. Okay. Gary mm -hmm. Shields, I'm an artist. I live in Lakeview, and I, I've been here a few years, in and out. So Gary did the Dr. Daly project with the sculpture that never got done, but he did the two sweet sculptures. Well, it wasn't my fault, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Johnson, I'm with the Lake County Resources Initiative. Uh, I think economic development means uh, job creation and retention and utilizing our resources. Jim Maltz is Lake County Resource Institute Director. Interested in Omnis Bill yesterday and 20 year stewardship contract for our mill to keep jobs. Okay. Yeah. Did it go through? Yes, it did. So now we just got to convince the people to give a contract. Good. Good work. I'm Ken Kester, one of the county commissioners. I'm thoughts on economic development is maintaining a core base of the economy, which is natural resources, whether it be timber or ag or whatever, but also expanding it to various other factors of the economy, such as amenity values is one. <coughs> I consider economy like a bucket of sand. Every grain of sand is different, but it takes every same grain to fill the bucket of the economy. <coughs> I'm Dave Knowles, the assessor. Um, I'm just interested in kind of keeping an eye out for what's in the future of old. I kind of work on the back end of the horse of this deal, but uh, I try to encourage and promote as much as we can out of our office. Uh, Bruce Webbin, as of tomorrow, I'll be an unemployed <coughs> NASA engineer after 51 years. Uh, and now I'm a uh, uh, candidate for 
County Commission, I'm not going to run against Ken because he'd be way too tough. I'm a Marine. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm Lily Price, representing the Lake Forest State Chapter. Hi, do you have a thought on what economic development needs to do? Not really. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'm Macy Vargas, and I'm here on behalf of Student Council from the high school. Okay. And you, no thoughts yet? Okay. I'm Madison Stewart and I'm here with Student Council also. Okay. Uh, I'm Alex Decker representing National Honor Society and I think economic development means like promoting the welfare or living standard for the community. Okay. Uh, I'm Bryce Cromerine representing National Honor Society and economic development to me is just always keeping options open for um, anything to come in. So. Okay. I'm Carter Schroenberger, I'm with uh, Lakeview of Bay, and um, I want to learn more about Lake County's economic state. All right, so you, you're interested in all this data I just handed out, <coughs> I mean, there's a lot of numbers on that, and I can go through some of the highlights, but I basically just gave it to you as background information so that you do kind of have a sense of what the economy looks like, and, and what Lake County looks like as far as its demographics and things. Um, one thing I noticed is that we have uh, around 520 under four or under five kids in the community now, but almost 1,800 over 65 seniors. So your population here in this community, in case you haven't noticed, is aging. Uh, and, the, and the average age of the, of the people living in Lake County now <coughs> is almost 49 years old. So I'm glad to see our youth here because part of what I consider economic development is opportunities for the youth to stay in the communities where they grow if they want to. And that's not always the case. When What we're going to work on today is what we call a SWOT. It's the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we see in the community and in the region for economic development. And the definition that I have for economic development is create. It's community development. It's the amenities. It's the schools. It's the hospital. It's the infrastructure within the towns and the roads. It's retention of our existing businesses and keeping those industries here that have been here. Agriculture is one of the high, highest uh, actually money earners, believe it or not. The income level for the average ag worker is over $50,000 a year and most people think of the manufacturing side of things as being where our dollars are but in York County agriculture is number one in income and it's not something most people actually understand. There's also a lot of uh, government work here that is related to those resource industries and so those government jobs though are primarily your county schools, your county hospital, your county government, or the town. And so as, many, as much as everyone thinks that this is a forest service town, most of the government jobs are actually in local government, not in the federal. Um, we're trying to also expand existing businesses. One of the things that I, I think I always quote as a, a, a reason to really pay attention to the people who are already here and doing business is if each one of those existing businesses added one job, that is more jobs than you could ever recruit in trying to get another business to come into this community. So really making those businesses that you have expand and, and have opportunities is really part of what I feel we need to work on. And when I talk about attraction, it's not necessarily going out and trying to get the next Google to come to Lakeview. However, there are possibilities, because they went to Pineville, right? <laughs> or Apple. I mean, you have an opportunity potential to attract certain businesses like that. But it's not the primary uh, effort that we, we're putting our, our effort into at this point in time, because really, we have to make sure that our, our base is solid to begin with. This one here is one of the ones I hear a lot about in our community, is the need for trained workforce. 
and, and a solid workforce. And so that is also part of economic development. And entrepreneurship, that's where my passion is, helping business startups, helping people start businesses and find new markets and create new opportunities. So that is kind of the definition that I'm working from that we, we have used in the past. And, and part of where I want kind of your feedback is on where you see where you're at now, your strengths, that's the S. What are the relative comparative advantages or the assets? Or what is it about this place, Lakeview, Lake County, that makes you want to be here? And I, you know, you willing to have you kind of think through a little bit. I put out pads of paper on the table and I want everyone to kind of, I want everyone, even the people who don't like to talk up, to write something down so we can put that up there. But if anyone wants to specifically call out something that they think, if this is something about Lake County that you don't want to lose, what would that be? For healthcare. Healthcare. Yeah, hospital and so forth. For a little okay. later, we've got amazing facilities. Yeah. What else? It's a strength and a weakness. It's isolation is a strength. Isolation is a strength. Okay. And I'll put uh, rural values. Rural values. Values. Hi there. Welcome. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. Can you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah. Time? My name's Judy Stewart. Hey, Judy. Hi. And she must have braved the roads <laughs> from Adele. She the roads are horrible. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So what we're doing, and, and I have pads of paper out for people who don't want to, who, I would love you to just, as you, you know, as we're going through this process, if you, Think of something, put it down on paper so we can capture it all. But what else is important to you and what is what is it about Lake County that is a real asset of what something we don't don't want to lose in the community? The landscape. The landscape. students back there, you've grown up here, have you ever lived anywhere else? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes? So from your perspective, what, what is important, what do you see about Lake County that you that you have didn't see in the last place you lived? The connections. Connections? Yeah. Pe people? Yes, the people. Self-sufficiency okay. and a state of mind. <coughs> yeah. With that goes independence. Independence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That leads to innovation. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay. The scholarships that are here. Yeah. Right. I'm going to run out of space here. And Challenge. I used to teach, and I used to have really good handwriting, but it's been a while since I did that. What else? The entrepreneurialism of the people. The entrepreneur, okay. Oh, shoot. Every time I spell it on the computer, I do get the E and the U mixed up. But entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. What else? The availability and access to public lands. Access to public lands. Offer. Okay. It's not typical in heavily populated areas. And. So just so you know, I, I spent yesterday doing a whole lot of research um, 
data, I'm a data junkie sometimes, and I just was on looking at a lot of reports. And one of the things that I learned about the trends that are happening now is access to public lands is what is drawing people to communities like this. It's the availability of recreation right out the, the door. It's the scenic landscapes, the beauties and things like that. So that is one of the things, the trends that I see is actually a positive that's happening that for many years we were seeing everyone leaving small towns. Now, I grew up in a town of 200 people in northern Maine and left when my parents moved because farming at the time they were doing it wasn't making money for them. So I went from 200 people town with everyone related to me to Sacramento, California with 200,000 at that time and feeling like a little tiny fish <laughs> in a great big pond. And so part of what I saw the value, see the value now of the community I grew up in was that, that people aspect of it, is that they did support each other. So does that kind of capture a little bit of what you see also in your community? Okay. If other thoughts, you know, we'll, we'll cap, uh, bring those up. Uh, matter of fact, Ginger, if you want to collect. You know, we're throwing that off, Betty. I think our geothermal on our shoulder is that much. Okay. Why don't you put that on a, a note thing so we just don't lose that? Maybe right yeah. there. Does anybody have anything written down on paper that they We've got one right here for you. There you go. I'm writing here. Okay. Do you guys have anything written? Thanks. Okay. Oh, we've got let you finish. Sorry to interrupt. Do you have room? Yes. I'll get it. There's a space. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's room. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I am going to put you on the spot and have you introduce yourself and I've asked everyone to introduce themselves and, and give a kind of short thought on what economic development means to you. Oh, okay. My name is Charlie Twint. I'm the CEO of the hospital and the health district here. Um, I use services too. Um, what is economic development? It is all about, from our standpoint, bringing more business, more opportunity, jobs, and work for our people. So we've gone through kind of the strengths aspect of what of what we're what we're about. You know, where are where are we strong? What what do we have to offer that not everywhere does? Now I want the the W. The weaknesses and what are the disadvantages you have in your community these are things that right now may be something you you feel really needs fixed it may you know it's it's a weakness it's something that isn't working as well as it could be um, so any thoughts along those lines question do you mean some something that needs to be fixed or something it, it's just an observation it's a could be an observation. It okay, could be sometimes observations can't be fixed. It is what that's it is. True. Yes, that's true, and that's okay. Okay, that's okay. So yeah, what are your thoughts on things that are that are weaknesses as far as what you have? It's the isolation again. Okay, it's so the it's strength. all the strength and a, and a weakness. Okay. <laughs> From a business owner perspective, what's the isolation mean? Distance of product. product. Distance from markets? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had a comment? I was going to say age gap. Age gap. And from age gap, is that... Can you say a little more? Yeah. Um, so, uh, for me, I feel like there's a lot of if you're 
out of high school um, that range from 18 to 35. There's not many people here that are in that range. So that also affects people's opinions where it's elderly thinking what's good for the town and then there's very few young-minded opinions. And that's a good observation and it's very true because if you do look at your statistics, when you get to those 20 to 25, 30 year olds, they disappear and they, they are not, but they are coming back in their 30s. So there is something about the community that draws people back, but there is, <laughs> you know, there is a, a gap. <laughs> and to build off what was mentioned as far as weakness, it's one of our weakness is our uh, hesitant to include the younger age in our overall business plans and such. Because when you turn seven zero like I'm about to, you already got your mind fixed. Hey, watch that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but new ideas is in the next generation. We need to capture that. I'm sorry to say this, but it's racism. Okay. Yes, um, I think a lack of willingness to change or to accept change. That's what you guys make. Also, lack of tactical resources in people. Okay. Okay. Technical resources. Yeah, people with technical resources. I mean, we have it, but sometimes we don't have enough. Like in big cities, mm -hmm. if you have a project on, you can pull many different folks in with different mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. Here limited. Yeah, a lot of uh, kind of along those lines. A lot of small businesses have problems with staff. They just can't get enough. Not just training, but people who can pass drug tests, for instance, or people okay. who are willing to work and show up the second day or the third day. Okay. I've had that conversation on many different occasions. Yes, I'm a real downer, but it's classism also. Okay. This place has always been like that. A group of people who control everything and a group of people who feel helpless. Class. Classism. Is okay. Education. Education? I mean opportunities or well like post after high school education, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. There's not very many like, you know, um, apprenticeships in Lakeview or okay. there is KCC but there's not like a variety of what you would want in like a bigger town. Yeah. Okay. Great. Did you, did you I was just thinking along with that. There's, I think there's a, a lack of mentorship to develop that also, you know, a trained workforce or uh, somebody that could start their own business or somebody that went to school here and could return. They'd be making more opportunities for them. Okay, in the back. Um, along with his education, I think that there's like a lack of opportunities for us students at the school to stand out against other students from other schools. Like we don't offer AB courses that like okay. Okay. Yeah. Lack of representation on the state level because of our minimal population. that I come across that not up here, some other ideas and things? Um, this total pervasive um, dislike of the government. You just pointed out that <laughs> the federal government is not is what people hate, but it's not the government that's here primarily. So this, this place has just devolved down into a hate of government. You mean government in general or just specific Gover government? Well, what government people say, general? primarily the federal government. Yeah. But yeah. There and 
part of that is that you're 70 some percent public lands 72 76 percent public lands so you do not have ownership of of your of your territory as much as the government does and which so fits into the number of people who voted for donald trump 70 <laughs> percent but, but but it's a contradiction because a lot of people who find this as a strength on your other page mm -hmm. was access to public lands. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is a value to them, but there's also that lack of control that you have over what goes on. Well, I know you're not into discussions, but that's for the people who are coming here mm -hmm. who want to come for right. access. The people who've lived here forever hate the government. From a business perspective, what are some of the roadblocks to doing business here in this community that you may not have if you were more connected or distance to market? We, okay, so that that. Oh, I always said that. We got distance from markets. What yeah. else? The internet. Internet. Yeah. Broadband. Broadband. Charlie, is that? Right. Yeah. Okay. Since the college runs too, a lot of people are a lot monthly. Okay. So the cost of doing business is, is a constraint. Then. Okay. Yeah. I would say um, because lots of people know each other, if someone tried a new business, um, because a lot of businesses are family run, it can hurt that family. Okay. So almost in a way, new businesses are afraid to come in for that reason. You're, okay. Uh, I think oh, I understand what you're saying. You're a little, you're not willing to take the risk because if you, you may be seen as a, a failure, right, or or not. Well, um, like that they could get run out, especially if it's a bigger business like a corporate, oh, whereas okay. most businesses here are family owned. Okay. So they could get run out for that reason that uh, they could lose. Um, I, I also have something um, okay. kind of in that classism realm is businesses in Lakeview are very clicky. Okay. Some, I, and I'm talking about the independently owned businesses, some support each other and some diss each other. <laughs> D.Y. <laughs> I understand the, the thing. What about, and I know we don't have any old public other than we get what Ken is here, but from an infrastructure point of view, which is one of the, the you know, your, I know broadband is one of those things. So anything else that needs, um, that is a constraint or a, a weakness? Our road system. I mean, we're making a lot of improvements, but it's still, okay. when you compare it to other areas, it's, we're tough. So does that relate to the transportation issue? It's part of the transportation, transportation or or distance to market? <clears throat> yeah, I, I always want to engage the newspaper too. Do you have an opinion here? Because you're welcome to share. That's not my job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always a weakness is people not with that saying that's not their job. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But with road transportation we have that up there someplace, don't we? We have yes. road, yeah, road and tracks, and actually it's kind of distance from market is the isolation, all of it kind of relates there, but yes. Yeah. Another disadvantage we have is adequate housing. Yes. yes. All right. I was hoping that would come up because Thank I you. see that. The expectation when people come from another community is not, of housing, is not the same as what we have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't have enough, we don't have really good apartment building. We don't have um, sort of places for singles to live that is not in a big house, or for that matter, a house that is um, the kind of place that isn't falling down. And that your aging housing is something that we have identified as something that has is kind of a, a barrier to new pe inviting it's not new just people in. It is absolutely correct. Right. Yep. Okay. 
Well, so I think another weakness is it can fall in the realm of amenity values, but uh, activities for different age groups. Okay. Always hear there's nothing to do here. But if you want to go out and fish and hunt, there is, but if you want to go out for the evening, the sidewalks rose up at dark. Yeah. Wages are also. You know, there is a perception of that. If you look at the statistics, though, you actually have a higher average wage than Klamath has. And again, because of the government influence, you know, yeah. that is it. So there is a discrepancy between the lower end and, and especially seasonal work like in the tourism industry itself. So yes, there are some very low paying jobs. There are also, you know, some of the jobs even in the healthcare industry, you know, they average out, but there, there's some, there's a wide range in, in entry level in that type of thing. And the perception that I've seen since I've come back is that people migrate here, people who are not necessarily good citizens migrate here because of their perception that this is a lower cost place to live. Yeah. Yes. I would also, well, I had a thought but I got cracked. Uh, we don't market ourselves well enough as a week. So, I guess I'm going to say lack of marketing or to promotion of a promotion. Good. Okay. We do, but it, it can be enhanced. All right. Well, it's a longer list than the strengths I see, but I, I think that if there, if you really thought about it, some of these. Some of, there's a lot more that could have gone on to the other board. Is there any anyone written anything down that we can we just you know pass it on up and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and go on? And I'm going to come back to this. Any stickies to go on here? Okay. So this is where. I want to hear some of the innovative thinking that you said is one of the strengths of your community. I want to know what trends are out there, what opportunities do you see for Lake County, Lakeview, larger region that we could take advantage of, that we should be pursuing? What opportunities? Tourism. Tourism. Well, and because of the because of the amount of space here, there is an opportunity to bring in some kind of a big industry, hypothetically. Other opportunities? Fred Smith's come up with trade, uh, teaching kids not going on to college and high school with trades, so building the homes of the concrete, electrical. Okay. Uh, Carpentry, vocational, trades. vocational trades. Mm -hmm. So, kind of a training or a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Solar. Solar. Yes. Okay. I was going to talk energy or so energy. solar okay. or energy. Okay. Okay. Art. Okay. Art from the point of view of artisanship or, or, or art um, art projects there. Art projects, okay. okay. I think there's opportunity that we haven't pursued, and that is uh, avenues or means of promoting housing. Okay. Like the Oregon Housing and Community Action Group. I only joined it in about three months ago. Get busy with other stuff, but we haven't delved into looking. Okay, <laughs> so we we have an opportunity to try to solve that weakness yeah. by working towards more housing. Educating ourselves and uh, mm -hmm. leverage. So, for you, to the back of the room, to want to stay here 
or to be able to stay here when you're in your 20s and not leave, what opportunities would you want to see? Um, it, it will be very tough to stay here during the 20s because, you know, in society we're taught to go out and edu further our education and okay. there's no major colleges here. Um, so that would be tough. Okay. I would but, say a variety of careers. Okay, a variety of careers, okay. Yes. Resource expansion on a sustainable level. Okay. Is that primarily lumber and wood or other resources? Predominantly all the resources that are being used at this point. Okay. Okay, we don't have anyone in our big industries here, do we? Curious to know. One of the things that is a trend that they talked about at the Oregon Business Summit in December, I went up to Portland, is the trend towards automation and robotics. And one of the reasons why our industries have shrunk is because the jobs have been replaced with machines. And so it is, it, it is an opportunity also in itself though, because a lot of what is happening and where jobs are being created are service related jobs which can be done from anywhere I have a daughter who works for Salesforce the, the company in San Francisco that does the basically helps with marketing and everything it's a computer based company she works and she lives in Riverside County in California and works from home she has four kids and she's able to just go to San Francisco maybe once a month to do her job. She basically could live anywhere where she can make sure she could get to where her job is at. When we did a survey of folks in this community and the outer skirts, we have book writers, we have attorneys working from home. What else? Um, <clears throat> financial services. Um, photography, uh, a gunsmith, somebody who, in, in a separate uh, online gun sales uh, bookstore, um, or online sales of books. Um, yeah, I can't think of, but those are the ones that come off the top of my head, but it's very amazing almost and this was looking in the Warner Valley when we were doing a survey there um, I would say probably through conversation this is all anecdotal it, it's not like it was a fast and, and uh, recorded survey but most folks that are ranchers or involved in ag also have a sideline business that's either related to that or it could be um, you know, a spouse who has something that, for lack of a better word, when they when they maybe moved here from someplace else, they they left that work behind, but they have found a way to bring some of that with them so that they can augment their income and also have that ability to to do what they used to do. So it it can be all, I mean it's lots of different kinds of things, just about everything you can think of from teaching online being involved with um, a community college or someplace like that where they're doing online classes, um, actually being a teacher. So, so in other words, the opportunities, the constraints are as much maybe the weakness in broadband and our ability to telecommute as they are other things. Yes? Yeah, kind of follow up on Ginger's thought. Uh, it, it's like internet-based. Uh, business. Mm -hmm. I, I've lived here now for 20 years, and my wife and I both continued to work for NASA since we, we've lived here. And we can do most of our work uh, on the internet. And there are other opportunities, other companies that would support that kind of business, a home-based business. Our, our internet service, I don't, I, I don't agree. I, I think our service is actually pretty good. I live out in the country. I don't live in town. And it's good enough for me for, for most things, not if you're doing computer graphics. But, uh, and then another one is uh, we have a huge resource here sitting out in the middle of the valley, which is the airport. Okay. Uh, we, there's a huge physical plant. The runway and the facilities there, the physical plant, is better than, for example, Bend. 
uh, as far as the, the, the runway and, and so forth. Uh, Bend has a really thriving aviation-based industry, lots of little sub-businesses and all kinds of stuff based around Bend. And Lakeview really has nothing, although some things are beginning to happen. So taking advantage of having the airport yeah. and being able to use that to be able to both bring people in or commute out if, if needed, is that? I well, it, it partly, but, but aviation-based industry, aviation this based. part of okay. the country is, is well-suited okay. for that, which is one of the reasons Bend has done so well. I've been trying to figure out how to word this correctly, uh, but anyway, a big opportunity is within the forest industry. We have a restriction called the 21-inch rule, and from the science of ecology, and our monitoring crew that Bryce is on, is bringing this stuff out. We've got, not everywhere, but we've got stands out there that we've got too many big trees and no small trees coming in. There is no next generation of trees. So taking a couple of big trees improves profitability jobs at the mill, plus helps reproduction to make sure you have a forest 80 years out in the road, 80 hundred years. And so that is a great opportunity to <clears throat> take the pendulum was wrong one time, swung too far another way, try and find that middle. We got some future farmers in the ag industry. What what do you see? Are you working on your family farms now? Do you work in, the, in your? What do you see happening in ag that could be an opportunity for this area? I think uh, Lake County is already obviously a really well developed ag community. Okay. It's a it's what a lot of people here do. Do you think people know about what you do? About ag. Yeah, I, I know you do, but do you think the outside world knows what it is you do? I think people somewhat do, yeah. Okay. Not as much in the production agriculture. They know about what further yeah. on down the line. Well, then I okay. Do we have any opportunities in the mask of the question in export hay markets to expand those? Okay. What's that? Export hay market, do we have more opportunities there? Yeah. Um, the there's as far as hay goes there's a lot of like you can there's horse people out there that buy a certain type of hay because they can't handle big bigger bales and a lot of people like uh like cow ranchers make big bales because there's your feed so the market kind of fluctuates a little bit but yeah there's there's opportunity to definitely improve it that's a big business in the north end of the county exporting hay mm -hmm. so to address that, especially in the north end of the county, um, recently, recently being probably the last six months or so, there's been some improvement in the ability, it's another transportation issue, of getting the hay um, into the Asian market, which was huge for them for quite some time until everything kind of had a problem at the port in Portland. And so it, it strugg they struggled and they ended up figuring out their own transportation system between uh, the north end of the county into Portland put it to put it on um, the railroad then go to Tacoma to ship it out because the port in Portland was pretty much I mean it was it wasn't pretty much it was shut down so things are starting to open up a little bit in Portland they have just uh, in terms of planning for the future but it's still sticky <laughs> And it's not just affecting our north end, it is affecting the entire west coast, so. Is, is there any attempt to grow specialized grasses like timothy, anything like that here? You and know what, they looked at some of the oil producing um, the mm -hmm. canola type of thing at one point in time, but that wasn't feasible. Uh, and also pulses. Um, pulses, you don't need lentils and, and chickpeas. You don't need um, any kind of, you, know, you. they can grow pulses in Montana in the coldest, most barren weather there, there is, land right. there is. And it's really becoming um, a, a real, real yeah, profitable there's, crop. There's a whole other conversation that would be really fun to have outside of this meeting about some of the things that they're experimenting with in the North End around um, soil amendments and around uh, some different types of grasses, uh, actually doing some, 
in areas where there isn't irrigation because they there is a moratorium on, on wells in the northern part of the county and so there's some folks that are looking at more dry land and how affordable is that and is it going to be What about down land? here, wanting just the north end of the county? Uh, more water. There's, pardon? More irrigation. You have this. You don't need a lot of irrigation for pulses. Right, but I, I don't know the answer to that. I know that what most of the farmers around here have found is that grass is the is what is selling and what they can make money on. I mean, when we were growing up, well, there was a lot of wheat and a lot of oats and a lot of um, grain crops that were grown around here. Lots of wheat. Most of the west side. I mean, I can remember that as a I mean, yeah. We all remember that, and I'm still not exactly sure, except for transportation might have been one of the issues. And markets. And market, right, mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, there could be that there could be some niche markets now, and I don't know how much experimentation is going on. Are you looking still at doing some agritourism type of things, or? I haven't done it, but I certainly think there's a lot of opportunity there. I mean, there's, there's you do a part time, you can do it full time, uh, in a variety of areas, like photography or just mm -hmm. um, just sightseeing, horseback riding, ranch work. Let people know that judge grows in the dirt. <laughs> Charlie, in the medical industry, are there opportunities that you see that this community might have a chance to take advantage of, or? In order to deliver more health care services, we have to import people. Okay. So what that would mean is to provide or develop a service that people would be willing to leave their community for to get that kind of care. Okay. Charlie, yeah. excuse me. I have a question for you when we're finished. Okay. Um, how about opportunities in health care billing? I, I, somebody could could someone start a business in that and be viable here in, in Lake County? I, I know there are people doing this out of their home, lots of places. There is some. I'm, it's the it's the, the benefit of the electronic processes. So it's becoming faster to actually do billing directly from where the care is delivered. The computer can then formulate and calculate a bill and send the bill without anybody touching it. Mm -hmm. that's, the, mm -hmm. that's what makes yeah. what you're asking for, the billing service, is somebody to take that information mm -hmm. and convert it from whatever service was delivered to creating a bill and sending that bill. The software programs are doing that automatically. Mm -hmm. So it's another industry that is automated. Right. Uh, one time the North End was talking about a hay compact, you know, doubling the weight in the same space. We're not quite yeah. close and to that. I don't know what ever happened to that. It, it happened, um, Dinsdale okay. has a compact, and, and that's how they're getting most of their, their okay. and putting it in. The export yeah. markets are a saturation market, mm -hmm. and it's a location, location, location. When you start exporting your hay, that goes back to what's up on the wall, is your isolation mm -hmm. plays against you in that. You've got high-end competitors such as Owensburg, Washington, and whatnot. You're starting to see some of it in the Klamath Basin, some of the export Timothy and whatnot. But the further out that you go, with the exception of Christmas Valley, um, you don't really see it because the, the profit margins aren't as high in that as what you may think an intense crop to get it to that level but it can be done it's just a big challenge here. so well you do have your niche markets too I okay. mean like like um, that you know some of the people out in Warner Valley uh, are doing the organic beef uh, and that's not new but it's you know they do it and it's and you could also begin to have a niche market for the kind of Timothy Hay and special grasses that you could do if you could develop them yeah, with that your, or, your organic markets can mm -hmm. consume your own products. Um, the challenges in, in organic marketing is you have to pick which organic cycle you want to be in 
and it's very doable, um, but they vary because they're not FDA approved. So they vary from state to state, but it's a great opportunity, and there's so a big or market. organic market. Yes. So do you, what is the name of the organic beef? Oregon, Oregon natural beef. Thank it's, you. It's, Thank yeah, you. it's it's not organic. I don't think it's just it's, it's, it's natural. 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 Yeah, it's natural. Yeah, because to do the organic, really, you gotta. It's a little harder. Yeah. But organic, licensing. organic, typically organic markets work really well in isolated areas because your outside impacts what is organic. Mm -hmm. So the more isolated you are, the better opportunity and the easier it is to get into an organic market versus a highly populated area where your, for lack of better terms, your neighbors can affect your certificate by their activities. Um, you know, nobody's talked about the big growing market we have here now, and it's marijuana. Well. There are some constraints to that in, in the county. But well, I know, yeah. but I mean, it's, no, I the, the, we have a we, we have a potential. We have it a, hasn't actually right. it hasn't actually happened. So that's that's the interesting part. Um, there's a lot of movement right now to uh, be ready for it and to apply for the licenses to do it, but it hasn't actually. But what forward. about the the big? facility that, that they annex the the town annex the right. the and land it's going isn't it no it is in the in the phase of red, being red rock no no no, no. 42nd group 42nd group. 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 Okay. group so they are they are poised and ready they have been building out and getting ready to do it but they are not growing yet well who's where's the stumbling block you say it's applying it's a for the license but who is it they're waiting for um, their turn to come up with the OLCC. The OLCC only um, issues the permits in order of uh, what they can process. That's one thing. And the other thing is the, uh, the amount that the OLCC believes that, the, that Oregon can uh, legally consume. Because they have sort of figured out some sort of a formula, as I understand, as to how much Oregon can produce and use within its own borders. If they produce any more than that, then it's obvious that it's not staying in Oregon, and it has to stay in Oregon. If it's grown in Oregon, it has to stay in Oregon. If that makes sense. Uh, I, did, I understand that the, the people wanting in the businesses have seemed to the market. That's there. correct. That's correct. I'm and sorry. so now. The people wanting in the business have exceeded what the market can stand, and that's the. Right. Charlie, you've had your hand up. I think an opportunity for us is to build our in railroad infrastructure. Because yeah. when we talk about all the grasses and how we could import or manage that, our biggest problem is transportation. And if we could move heavy, which of course A is very heavy, to move that in an economical fashion then you might ex expand and faster than five ten miles an hour. That would be better. We yeah. looked at that before with previous uh, operators and it kind of like a go, but it's something to re to approach the current operators. Had another thought that ties a couple things together. Uh, you know, solar is a big deal. I know Jim is very heavily involved. And, uh, and, and this is a great area for, for solar power. There's a lot of people objecting to it also. And I'm thinking about, uh, in our situation, you know, we're very small time alfalfa growers, but the cost of producing alfalfa, I have to irrigate. And, and I've tried passive irrigation, I can't, it just doesn't work. And, and so the cost, the energy cost of irrigating is very high. Now, now right now we're generating huge amounts of power, my understanding is it's all going into the grid, and there's a lot of complaints about people that it's not benefiting local. What if there was a way to tie that together, to have some sort of an ag grid or a local rate for, for solar uh, energy to irrigate. Is that's community power? Amen. <laughs> you already thought of that? Good. <laughs> We're trying to bring Bob Rogers back to do the designs from, and from stuff for right? yeah, yeah. yeah, I worked with him when I was profitable. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, we're trying to get him back. Like and and it's, it's going along with that, you need to have the local government involved <laughs> when it gives any tax breaks. <laughs> 
to also say there needs to be this number of local people employed and there needs to be this amount of that energy or whatever it is going to back to the community. I know that that's part of community power, but you need to have your, your governmental officials involved in that also too. Because a lot of times when you give tax breaks, there's, that's not even considered. Well, we've been at this sitting for about an hour. I'm going to let everyone take a very short stretch break if you need to. I neglected to bring water, so I don't know if there's a water fountain or anything uh, here. Before you step out, on the marijuana, uh -huh. I'm known as being very pro-medical. So I would put book education slash medical. Okay. I'll let Jim do the recreation at home. <laughs> <laughs> Water. Let me go see what I can find out. There's also cooperative.